So I'm finally getting to looking at those two lawnmowers I garbage picked a couple weeks ago. So I'll just show you a basic procedure just to check them out and they'll probably run. First tidbit of information, if you don't already know it, is to date your Briggs and Stratton. Briggs and Strattons have three sets of numbers. The third set, the first two digits, is the year it was made. So this says 86. It's an 86 quantum. This one will have the same numbers somewhere in the metal cover, but you've got to take a bunch of plastic off to find it. First step, check your compression. Seems fine. Do that with every mower before you start working on it. Next step, if it has a safety handle, put a vice grip on it to disengage the brake on the engine and disconnect the spark plug wire. And move it well away from the spark plug. Whenever you're working on a Briggs and Stratton and you're going to tip it over, always tip it so the exhaust points upwards. If you tip it on its side so the exhaust points downwards, then when you rotate your crankshaft, which I'm going to do next to see if it's bent, it'll fill up your combustion chamber with oil and your air cleaner full of oil too. And that becomes quite a problem to start and you have to replace your air filter. What happens is, even if you can't see it, there's that little cover there and that's where your valve springs are. Well, that's where it collects the PCV gases, positive crankcase ventilation, vents them through a tiny tube and puts them back into the carburetor. Well, when you tip it with muffler side down, even if you're just cleaning out the grass, it fills that little chamber up in there where the springs are with oil. And then if you go to pull it right away afterwards, it put, or rotate it while it's on its side, it puts all the oil into the carburetor, clogging the air filter and putting it in the combustion chamber. It's nothing wrong with tipping it on this side, you just can't rotate the blade and if you do that you have to let it sit for two minutes before you attempt to start it or rotate it. So even though the carb side's pointing down and gas is leaking out, there's no better way. Now whenever you have a crankshaft more than one inch long, they tend to get bent so there's no use spending time working on it if you're just going to shake like crazy and no one's going to buy it. So as I'm rotating the blade, I'm watching the center nut to see if it wobbles. And this one's straight, so it's worth fixing. I don't know of any good methods to straighten bent crankshafts. So like I said, some gas runs out. You're also looking at the cutting edge of the blade while you're doing that to see if it hasn't got a big dent in it. If it's got a big dent in it that looks fresh, that means it may have a broken flywheel key too. Next, remove your spark plug and your air cleaner cover even if it's the old kind of Briggs with the air cleaner on top because someone else may have t might have tipped it and rotated it and the air cleaner could be full of oil thus choking it out for when you go to try to start it and of course you want to see if your plug's got water on it or if it's in good condition or not just because it's rusty on the outside doesn't mean anything also smell your gas Uh, I always assume gas is stale when I get a lawnmower, so I always dump it out and put fresh in. Well, this air filter is not really too oily. We could save that by beating out some dirt and giving it a good blow. Good enough. Um, all Briggs and Stratton's that have plastic tanks, that means they don't have a metal tank underneath the carburetor. They sometimes have a problem with the mounting bracket that holds the carburetor to the engine, so it's always a good idea to shake this and see if it's sturdily mounted. Uh, the bolts break off or they unscrew themselves and the carburetor flops all over the place and may be impossible to start or keep running smooth. Next, pinch off the fuel line. And I always assume on an unknown lawnmower that the carb bowl could have some water or dirt in it. So I always unscrew the nut on the bottom, dump it out and blow it out. And check the tiny jet is clear. Soon gas will come gushing out but not the whole tank because I've got the hose pinched off. Some have a valve to shut them off like on those older models. See what I mean? But that's good. So long as you're not on a paved driveway, concrete doesn't get bothered at all. 
So that's the little jet. There's a tiny hole in there and a hole that feeds it. It's always a good idea to poke a piece of very thin wire, like from a wire brush down those holes and then blow them out. Then take off the bowl. They're a little stiff. You sometimes have to move the plastic cover over a bit. And this one's actually damn good. Just a quick blow and throw it back together. Always check that your float's functioning. Give a blow in there too. Blow the bowl out and blow the jet. If your lawnmower seems to only run every time you push the prime and then dies five seconds later, you can pretty much be guaranteed that there's water in that bowl, which is pretty easy to see underneath the gas, or there's a little particle of dirt in that tiny jet hole. So just release the bowl and it'll probably run fine after that if the gas is fresh. Bowl is back on. Now you always want to check that the primer works before you put your air cleaner cover back on. In between filming I stopped and drained all the old gas out and put fresh stuff in. So now I'm going to release the vice grip on the fuel line. Wait about a minute till it fills the carb bowl up. And then I'm going to look into the carburetor since this model doesn't have a choke and give it some rapid pushes and see if it squirts a little gas in there then at least I know it's going to start. If your primer bulb appears good and your finger is sealing well on that little hole on the end and it's still not pushing gas out and the carb bowl is full then the little gasket around the face of this plastic thing goes bad or is missing and that prevents it from creating the suction to get the gas up there and prime your carb so you have to buy that tiny gasket then. Well I'm at it I'll check the plug. Well, even though it looks old and crappy it's not worn it doesn't have a crud build up on the insulator in the middle so that's a perfectly good plug. I'm going to put it back in. Okay, now to check if the prime works. The faster you push these bulbs, the more effective they are. And that appears to be gotten wetter in there, so I think it's working. I always like to start them the first time with the air cleaner off, just so I can check how things are working. And on some models you can see if the governor's working and stuff like that. Now, don't forget to check the oil. And as usual, this one's got none. <laughs> oh well, simple fix. Oil's good now. Put the spark plug wire back on. <clears throat> I haven't even checked for spark yet, but because this has the electronic ignition, it most likely does have spark. If it doesn't start, then I'll check. Now I'm checking the safety handle that it feels like it has the correct amount of friction and movement. So often the cable is bent because people loosen the handlebars, bent them over, and pinched it. Because if this isn't working right, your brake will be on while you're trying to pull it, and the machine will be shut off, no spark. So now that we've done this basic procedure, we'll give it a couple more good shots. And we're ready to start. If you're pulling it, and the cord is yanking back out of your fingers and hurting your fingers, that's bad. That means the flywheel key is broke. It could have a bent crankshaft. Or it means that it's missing its blade. You've got to start them with the blade on because the blade is the flywheel for a lawnmower, so it needs it. Or the blade is loose. So check those things <laughs> if it jerks back. So here I go. My garbage pick lawnmower. First attempt to start. I can't believe it. Even the power drive works. 
I wonder why it was in the garbage with a sign on it that said free. I took the cover off just to check the power drive mechanism before I started it, and it appeared to function. This particular brand of lawnmower does have problems with the gears and stuff in there. If your mower starts and makes a whole lot of white smoke when it first starts, either someone tipped it and rotated the blade, like I said, or it was stored on a heavily tipped angle, and that causes oil to run past the rings and get in the combustion chamber. So always run it for five minutes before you decide whether it's a good or bad motor. Now just a sharpen and a pressure wash. We've got full detail for retail. Beer money, sweet. This was only a less than a one beer job. One more thing, if your primer bulb on your Briggs is in bad condition, they're actually easy to change. The little plastic ring that's part of the rubber bulb, it's a little groove you can stick a flat shoe driver in. So you just stick it in, catch the groove, bend and pry it up. It doesn't matter how much you damage it, so long as you don't scratch the outside too much. And it doesn't take you long just to rip it out. And the new one, you just shove it back in with your fingers part way, and then just push it back and forth and work it in until it snaps into the bottom and it's changed.